be recording now. Fabulous. Okay, Jean, you are ready to do roll call. Okay, welcome to the uh, the May 17th meeting of um, Commission on Diversity Awareness, and I will call this meeting to order and begin with at uh, 131 and begin with roll call. Uh, Jean, uh, here. Carolyn Kidd. Here. Sarah Jarvis. Here. Mandy Gebler. Here. Marcella has already sent in uh, an excused absence. Bethany Camp. I don't see Bethany online just yet. Okay. Angelica uh, Sanchez. Here. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we will begin with our mission statement. Um, CODA is a commission to foster support, respect, awareness, and appreciation of diversity among all citizens of Flagstaff. Would anybody like to read the land acknowledgement? Okay, I will go ahead. The Commission on Diversity Awareness humbly acknowledges the ancestral homes of the area's indigenous native nations and original stewards. These lands, still inhabited by native descendants, border mountains sacred to indigenous peoples. We honor them, their legacies, their traditions, and their continued contributions. We celebrate their past, present, and future generations who will forever know this place as home. Okay, number four, upcoming opportunities and, and announcements. Does anybody have any announcements uh, for the upcoming month? Just me. Yay. <laughs> so um, we have Pride of the Pines, Pride in the Pines, and this is a, a parade um, also in the morning time. And I will be sending everybody um, more information on that, but we're inviting you to come out in the parade. And it is on, it is June the 17th which is also the same day that Flagstaff is celebrating Juneteenth. Um, so the parade is early in the morning. Um, it is free. You can bring, you know, bring your friends, your family. If you, if you have um, co-workers that you want to invite, um, I'll send you some more information on that. I think we'll be meeting there for seven, but I will send you the link where if you're taking part, we still want you to fill out that information. And in the afternoon, right after the parade, we're going down to Thorpe Park, where we're going to have Pride in the Pines, where there are lots of exhibit of boots and music and dancing and food and really, really great time. So if you are interested also to get a booth, I will send you the link and you can just um, go ahead and pass it on and be a part of it. Yay. Yay. Thank you, Carolyn. Any other people have any other announcements? Okay, we will go on to number six then. Uh, approval of the minutes of the April 19th, 2023 meeting. Has everybody read the me uh, the minutes and have any um, have any comments? I didn't see anything that needed to be changed. How about others? This is Carol. I didn't see anything else to change, but um, so. I will move to have the minutes approved. Motion. Do we have a, we have a second? I second that. Commissioner Jarvis, I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it passes. We will move on to number seven. And uh, number seven is date of next meeting, which is June 21st. Those uh, two weeks, two and three are going to be busy. We're going to have all of the pride stuff and then we're going to have our meeting. So does uh, June 21st work for everybody? That should be fine for me. That's fine for me. Okie doke. All righty. Well, now we will move on to our action items. And I'm very pleased that we have with us 
uh, Dora Serbanescu, um, who is the diversity um, officer at Northern Arizona Healthcare. And I apologize if I made a big mistake on the pronunciation of your last name and my apologies. Um, so welcome, and we're so glad we're with you, at, you're with us, and I'm so glad to have met you a couple of weeks ago. Great, the pleasure is all mine, Jean. Hi, everyone. My name is Dora, and Jean, you did not butcher it that bad. It's Serbanescu. Um, I work for Northern Arizona Healthcare, and um, part of my role, uh, a big chunk of my role as the program manager of people experience is diversity, equity, and inclusion um, at NAH. So um, Jean and I got to speaking when it came to AAPI month, which is currently happening, the uh, American and Asian Pacific and Islander month, um, which is the month of May. Uh, we got to meet and got to chatting uh, about what is happening at NAH with this role. So I just wanted to let everybody know a little bit about it and a little bit about our cultural celebration program, um, which is about to wrap up its first year, its inaugural year of six celebrations that we started last September. And we are wrapping it our, up our first year with pride, which we will be part of the parade. So look for our floats. And we will also have a table over. Yeah, I'm super excited. It's going to be great. We got some t-shirts made for our staff. And we will also be participating in Pride in the Pines. So we'll have a table there manned by our staff. So we're very excited. Um, one of the main reasons I wanted to, to meet you all and to let you know a little bit about what's happening at NAH is that in our second year and moving forward, we would really like this to become more of a community-centric effort. Um, for our first year, um, we really focused on in-house and within our organization for a lot of the celebrations. And we would really love to open some of our celebrations to the wider Flagstaff community as we enter our second year and really start solidifying who we are as a cultural celebrations program, as well as who we are in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I think it's important that I share a little bit about how we celebrate different cultures at NIH and how we um, came about, and thank you, Carolyn, yes, we really look forward to seeing you at Pride in the Pines too. And we've got some really awesome stickers made that I splurged extra for them to have glitter on it. So I hope you get your hands on one for your water bottle. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how we came to the conclusion of celebrating the six celebrations that we do. And I've got a small little PowerPoint here to share with you. And please let me know when you can see my screen. We can see it. Perfect. Thank so um, the diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility um, has started really when, when, when creating the framework for this, what we looked at is the demographics. Um, so the demographics of NAH, of Yavapai, and Coconino counties, and we looked at the comparison. Overall, where does NAH compare to the demographics that are within the communities that we serve. Are we on par? Are we tilted one way or another? And what we noticed is that the, really creating this, we um, looked at the demographics and um, saw that maybe there are some places that we are lacking in and some places that we are doing quite well. Um, so that is how we came about the six celebrations that we do year round, and that's NAH that celebrates that as an organization. Black History Month, Women's History Month, Asian Heritage Month, LGBTQI plus Pride, so Pride Month, Hispanic Heritage Month, and Native American Heritage Month. And we really do it on a rolling starting in July, and it, it coincides with the beginning of our fiscal year. Um, so that's why I said that we are almost at the end of our first year. And I'm proud to say that it has really evolved since we started. Um, what was really important to us as an organization is to ensure that we celebrate these different um, heritages in a way that is that gives the same attention to all different heritages. So you know, for Black History Month, it's not like we would have a huge celebration, but then for LGBTQT, we've got a very small celebration happening. So essentially what we really did is focus on having lunch and learns and cultural presentations 
um, all throughout each month. Monthly, there is cultural food and decorations in our cafeteria. Uh, in terms of celebrating, um, you know, for Women's Month, we had famous women chefs. Um, we had cultural dishes for Black History Month and Native American Heritage Month that were suggested by our staff. For um, Pride Month, we are going to celebrate famous chefs that are part of the LGBTQT plus community. So that's been really nice to really involve all of our staff, including some of our clinical staff who um, often either are not on site or unable to come to the lunch and learns. Um, we've also made those accessible through Zoom, and we are starting to record them to be able to have a repository that our staff can listen to. A sample celebration of the way that we do it. We have posters that we um, distribute every month. So we do a cultural presentation, um, and that cultural presentation so far has been anything from Ballet Folklorico that came and did a dance back for Hispanic History Month. For Pride, we're going to have a Pride trivia, which is going to be animated by one of our employees who also performs as a drag queen here locally in Flagstaff. So we're really excited to have them um, animate our trivia. We have also had, um, for AAPI Month, we have a huge potluck that is happening next week that has been prepared by some of our employees that um, are AAPI. So the cultural presentations have really gone the range. Um, so that's been really interesting. For our Lunch and Learns, I will say that this has evolved tremendously through our first year. Um, we've gone from a Lunch and Learn um, for Hispanic History Month, which was done by one of the NAU professors in uh, Hispanic Studies that came and talked to us a little bit about that, to um, Black History Month, where we had a panel of both community members as well as some of our staff around um, current issues on um, the minorities and the Black community within Flagstaff. For Pride Month, we're also going to have a panel and it's really going to focus on how best we can serve the LGBTQT plus patient population at our facilities. So it has ranged the gamut. And I think that as we continue um, doing these different celebrations and really involving our staff in sharing their culture and their heritage with us, I think this is going to evolve. And I would love to be able to see more of our community members participating in these over the next year and two years and, and moving forward where we are able to really solidify who we are um, in terms of DEI at NAH. We also wanted to give our staff all of those resources online. So we've created internal pages for them to be able to access everything and to be able to reference back to the different um, lunch and learns that we've had. And also suggest if there's other cultural celebrations that they would like to celebrate. So we'd love to be able to help them out to celebrate anything else that they feel is important within our community, within our organization, and to be able to help them with that lift and to have a framework or framework around it. So that's what we have been doing over the past year. Um, as I sit here and kind of go through it, it might not seem like a lot, but it has been a huge leap forward for us as an organization um, for this role, for my role to be created that focuses largely on DEI. And as we get our footing going, um, I would love to be more involved with the community and for um, NAH to become a place where people can go and listen to these lectures, to these lunch and learns, and, and meet more of our uh, very diverse population. Thank you so much, Dora. I really appreciate you sharing. Uh, do do uh, uh, First of all, I, I neglected to um, welcome our guests. We have several guests, uh, Ishmael uh, Munin and Ray Garcia, and um, who am I missing? Um, there was another person, um, I believe. Uh, anyway, there's one more person that somehow I missed. Um, was, I believe it was Donovan. Okay, 
Donovan. Hello. There was Thank also. You. Thank yes. you. It's pronounced as Monene. Monene. Okay. Monene. Okay. Thank you for correcting me. Thank um, you. Anyway, does anybody have any questions for Dora? Well, what I would hope, uh, what I would like to um, uh, invite you to do, Dora, is go ahead and keep us apprised. Send uh, either um, uh, Lisa or myself or both of us, um, you know, announcements, and we can post the link on our website also. And of course, in the beginning of every meeting, we have our uh, announcements of activities around the community, and we will definitely. Um, uh, uh, we will definitely announce all the things that you're doing at that. And uh, really, I'm glad to see NAH uh, having hired you and, and creating this initiative. It's, it's good news for the community. I do have one person with their hand up. Carolyn, did you have a question? Hi. Yeah, Carolyn. Yes, I have a question. Dora, thank you so much for presenting us with this. It is really good to see that more and more um, uh, employers and, and, and organizations are having this and they're making that extra effort to do so. Thank you so much for joining us. I just want to find out your lunch and learns. Is it open to the community or just for your staff? So currently it is only for our staff. However, in our second year, we would really like to open it up to the community. I think we were challenged with two factors this year. One is we're a hospital and in terms of visitors for COVID-19, we did have some strict rules and didn't want to overburden um, our hospital with that. However, with those those um, rules being lifted as of May 11th, I think we're going to have a lot more leverage in order to invite the broader community to our Lunch and Learns next year. Great, thank you so much. Looking forward to be invited. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Carolyn. And also, I just found the name of our additional um, uh, guest, which is Mariah Franklin. Welcome, Mariah. Oh, OK, oh, yes. any Mariah other comments? Mariah is a part of our HR team, Jean, oh. and she's sitting in for Sarah today. OK, OK. Well, we're glad to have you, Mariah. All righty. Well, thank you again, Dora, and I know that we will be in, in, in contact with you, and I look forward to the working, uh, working relationship. Thank you, Jean. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, that was wonderful. Uh, now our next um, uh, item on action items is update on the Juneteenth uh, work group uh, report from Bethany. Bethany's not here, but I'm part of that work group too, so I'll go ahead and give a report. Uh, this is a collaborative effort with uh, the Indigenous uh, Commission, and we met with them and um, we uh, we talked about um, deferring at this time to more research on um, the day after Thanksgiving. There were some uh, definitely some reasons to uh, seek a different date um, for to honor uh, Indigenous Day. And so what we're uh, focusing on now, what we're uh, working on now is coming up with uh, kind of some formal ideas to present to City Council on making Juneteenth an official Flagstaff holiday. And uh, to that end, um, we are going to reconvene um, the work group is going to reconvene in uh, on the 16th of June, and um, everybody, you know, took away a task to do. My task was to come up with an annotated bibliography for um, uh, research on what other municipalities have done. Uh, I believe Carolyn is going to be doing the um, uh, research and bringing to the work group what the county has been doing in regard to that holiday. And uh, some other people had some other tasks that they were going to do. So that's underway. And um, to make this really um, kind of timely, right before this meeting, I received an email from Rose Toey. Uh, who is the liaison with the Indigenous uh, Commission. And uh, she sent me an article that just um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, in fact, on April 19th, um, 
Phoenix officially voted in a vote of seven to one. The Phoenix City Council has made it official that um, Columbus Day will be changed to Indigenous Peoples Day, and uh, that will be added as an official holiday. And um, this is really good news. Uh, and of course, one of the comments from one of the people I thought was very interesting, and I need to, uh, I, I want to just very quickly uh, read this one sentence. Medina hopes that people don't treat the day as it's just another vacation day, but rather use it as an opportunity to connect and acknowledge the indigenous communities within their community and understand that they are living on stolen land. Very important. So that's the update uh, for that particular uh, work group. We will bring back more information um, next month. And uh, <laughs> thank you, Carolyn. Yeah. So, um, so any comments about that or any questions? Okay, uh, well then we'll move on to C, which is the Pride Report. And uh, we did conduct, uh, we did hold our Pride panel the first week of, uh, or the last week of April. Um, uh, Deb and her new uh, incoming executive director, who's now the um, the or president, um, incoming president, um, attended this history of Pride and Flagstaff. I I was there to present uh, history of Coda, and our um, our guest Ray Garcia and uh, our commissioner Bethany Camp were there to talk about the um, collection project, the collection of stories and history of LGBTQIA uh, plus in Flagstaff. And um, it went well, it wasn't, you know, there was a small attendance, but a very important attendance. And um, so um, Ray, do you have anything you wanna add to um, uh, what I just said about the panel that we did with the library? I thought I saw Ray chime in, but I don't see him now. So he may have dropped off. Okay, all righty. So anyway, it was good. And then our next collaborative um, event with the library will be in uh, November. And um, I'm assuming what we're gonna do is talk about the history project and the stories collection project, but that is to be determined. Um, now, following up on what Carolyn shared at announcements, um, CODA is, does have a, uh, uh, I, I put in the application, we're going to be marching as CODA uh, in the parade. And uh, we were looking into uh, also getting a booth, but um, we decided because uh, uh, Chris Road already has a booth. So what we'll do is uh, support Chris and um, his, his booth and Coda will be there to uh, pr provide whatever we're going to provide at that point. Um, uh, Chris is gonna be in charge. So uh, I don't have real specifics at this point, but I will uh, have some and, and we'll forward information to Lisa to send out to the whole commission. But one thing I do know that we need for the, uh, Chris is gonna be with us with CODA in the, um, in the parade. And one thing I, I, I wanted to ask two things of the commission. Number one, uh, with our very limited um, uh, budget, do you think it's wise use of the budget? Could we possibly have one of those vinyl uh, banners printed so that we can, as we're marching in the parade, we can have our code of banner. What do, what do people think about that? I think that's an excellent idea. Yes, because okay. we're asking people to bring their banners so it will, you know, um, sectionize people on there. So you'll know exactly which organization is being represented and stuff. And I think banners might be cheaper than, than uh, ordering t-shirts. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. 
<laughs> and yeah, so I didn't even think about that, but I was just thinking, I think we have such a limited budget that the most economical thing that I could think of was do a banner. Um, great, thank you. Anybody else have anything to uh, weigh in on that? Well, Dora put in the chat that the Pride Parade fee has been waived for this year. It sure has. Right. Yep, it has and been waived, so it's free. Anybody could come to the parade. Correct. As long as you don't bring horses or reptiles, you're good to go. Yes. <laughs> and I was glad to see both of those, actually. Um, okay. Anybody, any, any other? So I guess we can go ahead. And one of the things I asked Lisa to do is find out who the city uses for their vinyl banners. Uh, because they might have uh, the logo already, you know, kind of in their, um, you know, in their archive of, of uh, logos. Go ahead, Lisa. I was going to say, I'm waiting to hear back from Alan regarding that. He's checking into it for us. And okay. so as soon as I know, I will definitely let the group know. Okay, great. Thank you. And I think that the turnaround times of those are pretty quick. So uh, we do have, you know, like four weeks. So, but uh, so we're moving on that. Um, the other thing that I do uh, uh, that the um, applic, you know, we had to fill out the application thing online and they ask that every group that marches have two safety monitors. Now, I don't know if the, um, you know, the neon um, vests are going to be provided by Pride or if we need to bring our own. But um, I'm looking for two volunteers um, who may know of um, friends or family that might serve as those two safety monitors and wear the, the vests. I can ask my husband if he'll do it. I'm sure he'd be more than happy to do so. He also has first aid training, so he would probably be oh, really excited to do that. Fabulous. Excellent. Okay. So that's great. I'm thrilled. Was Anybody that, else? Was that Mandy? Was yes, that, that was Mandy. Mandy. Okay. Yeah, that was Mandy. <laughs> okay. Well, just keep it in your, you know, keep it on your radar. And if you have a family member uh, who might be um, uh, willing to serve as a safety, um, uh, a safety monitor for the Pride Parade for our group, uh, that would be great. Just shoot me an email and let me know. And um, also, uh, the only other thing is, I hope all of us turn out. Oh, I know. The other thing I wanted to ask the commission, um, do, do you uh, think it is a good idea to contact all of the um, former commissioners? Do I have your permission to do that? And I can send out an email for former commissioners to go ahead and march with us. I think that's a great idea. So we could yeah. get to meet them too. Yeah, so we could get to meet them. Okay, this <laughs> it's a is a good idea. UD. <laughs> awesome. And also, um, just a reminder that besides the safety, uh, you know, trying to uh, get family members to volunteer to be safety monitors, the whole families are also welcome to uh, to join in in walking with us. So my husband just said, yes, he will do it for sure. Oh, yay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Awesome. A big bonus that he's also first aid. <laughs> OK, oh, so yeah. that's, that's basically the report there. And um, I will be forwarding forwarding any um, any, uh, you know, new developments or more information and to Lisa so she can disperse to all of y'all. And I'm really looking forward to a really good time. I think it's gonna be a blast. I'm thrilled that we have a parade. This is the first annual, so it's good news. Any other, any questions? Okie dokie. Well, now we're gonna move on to uh, discussion items. And the first discussion item, we're gonna bounce back to you again, Carolyn, on proclamations. Yay. OK, <laughs> so I emailed the um, proclamation um, to Lisa. Did you get a copy of it? And Mandy. 
I did. I did see it first thing this morning. I apologize. Sorry. Yes. No, that's all right. Was actually, it was late too. I was actually speaking with the meat off. I oh, did wait, get the that's copy. Fine. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Um. So it's just a draft, and I don't have it. The computer I'm using right now, I don't have it up on there. Um. Either Lisa or Mandy, do you mind sharing it? And it's a draft. Yeah. Let me see if I can. Go yeah. Ahead. Thank. Thank you so much. And my apologies for sending it so late because we this month has been really crazy with a lot of people getting sick. And, you know, so we are really tight here <laughs> in the office. So, OK, yeah, I have it. Let me go. ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by the way, while Mandy is pulling that up, I just want to send out, you know, a little clap and kudos to Carolyn for um, uh, for the AAHIPI uh, presentation. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> well, it's, it was team effort, right? Team effort. Yeah. I showed up to represent, but yeah. it was team effort. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So, Mandy, could you increase your screen a little, Release if me. you don't mind? Uh, yeah, maybe if you click on enable editing too, it probably will bring it up a little more. Yeah. There we go. Can you see that? Good. Yes. Yes, we can. Excellent. So um, we will send the draft. Uh, uh, Lisa will send the draft uh, for everybody to make their comments on it. It's quite long, but I just want to want to just point out a couple of little additions. Um, I did. Um, I went ahead and put in uh, LGBTQIA2S, which is to spirit plus in there um, because, you know, we're using that a little more. Um, so I'm, I tried putting it in everything. And then the theme of this year for um, Pride Month is hashtag behind the lens. And if you notice in the second paragraph, it is a contribution to the cinema and film from behind the lens. So there are a lot of things about the, um, is a lot of, talk and and, and and lots of documentary too about the directors and the screenwriters and the costume designers um, behind the lens for, for Pride Month. So this is the theme for, um, for Pride Month. So I made sure and put that in there. Um, in the third paragraph, we spoke about um, the uh, dignity and awareness um, and welfare. You know, we need to promote the welfare of uh, persons of, of the community. Um, speaking more about uh, um, transgender children and parents, you know, how we have certain legislature and laws that are passed um, against that community. And, and we have to understand, too, that it, they are part of our community, of a part of our nation. Right. So um, it is very important for us to be mindful and know of these issues and be advocates, you know, be advocates. And if we if we are um, at a position where we have to make a decision or vote on a particular topic, we want to also make sure that, you know, we vote and we um, we advocate for everyone, every citizen and every resident of a community. And we talk about the health discrimination and stuff. So when you go down a little deeper down, one of the things we want to highlight is that the city of Flagstaff, you know, through CODA, we are aware of these things that are happening and we are trying um, more and more to educate persons and let people be aware of certain things. Um, so, so that is most of the things that I put in there. We did speak about, you know, the high, um, I did speak about the high, um, suicidal rates also within the last year. It's in there. I had to touch on that because it was really important to do so. Um, and then down at the end now is us asking for, um, Mayor Betty Daggett now to pro proclaim that June 2023, the month of June, is Pride Month. So basically, that's a synopsis on it. But it's pretty long. But if you see any anything that you think um, it will be better um, stated, please feel free to to make that adjustment or to send you know your comments to Lisa and um, and Chair Tona. Or um, even if you you know any grammatical errors, because it always you know many eyes better than two, right? And, and that's I actually it. just, 
I actually just sent it out to everybody. My apologies okay, good. for the delay. No, that's all right. It over to you. I sent it late too, so that's fine. <laughs> I think Jean had a question. No, I, that was an error. I was trying to. Uh, I was actually trying to pull up the participants list. <laughs> so, oh, got you, got you, got you. Thank you. Sarah says that this is great and she loves it. But Sarah, right. I just sent a copy over to you. So if there's anything that you want to add or delete, you'll be able to uh, review the draft because I just sent it over to you. Yes, because, you know, there's some things that, you know, you're passionate about and you really want to put in there. Please feel free to do so. This is a document that we all should have an input. You know, it's not only my um, document. It's not what my, I'm passionate about because I can get really passionate, right? So please, if you see something, go ahead and put it in there. We want this to be a collective effort because it's, you know, it's, it's the community that makes change. Yeah. And that's it. Well, I agree with Sarah. I think this is really uh, very comprehensive and and uh, very inclusive. And particularly at this point in time where there's such a uh, awful backlash, particularly uh, against trans, but against the entire community. Yeah, this looks really good. Well, what I would like to do is just uh, make a motion to um, accept this uh, proclamation and uh, move it forward uh, to city council um, with any uh, edits that may come to Lisa's desk within the next week. I agree. I think it's extremely comprehensive and it's really, it does take into account the the issues that are going on today, like, you know, the issues with transgender care and in Florida that, uh, you know, don't say gay things and all these other issues. I think it's really important to bring that awareness to people that might not be as knowledgeable about those things happening. Excellent. So is that a second, uh, um, Mandy? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so all those in favor of moving this um, uh, proclamation forward to the city council uh, with any edits that come in in the next week, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, this is great. Thank you so much. Uh, this is this is really good. And I also want to do just uh, kind of a, a sidebar here, a little shout out to NAH, who is actually a couple of years ago put on one of the m finest uh, uh, trainings I've ever been to on trans youth, trans youth care. And of course, what you're seeing in the media right now is really distorted and really um, a scientific as opposed to scientific, and um, uh, the science of all this was well, well, well um, presented in that two-day training that NEH did uh, a couple of years ago. Um, our our previous chair D. Wegwort was there also, so it was it was good. Okay. Um, Updates for for uh, from our staff liaison. Uh, I see that we don't have. Uh, I don't. It, it looks like our council liaison, Kara House, wasn't able to be here. So it's all you right now, Lisa. <laughs> well, there was, wasn't anything specific um, in conducive or in conjunction with Coda. Um, there were several considerations for appointments um, to the Heritage Preservation Commission. So there, they were still looking for people. So there was some consideration there going on for appointments. The remainder of the city council meeting, excuse me, this past week was um, consideration and action on several things that's been ongoing. Um, specifications to liquor license for new uh, businesses, and then some recommendations and some applications for some real estate ventures, but nothing specific uh, to or for CODA this past week. Awesome. 
Thank you very much. Okay, Lisa, could you put the uh, uh, work group list on the on the screen? Oh, wait a minute. No, Carolyn, go ahead. A uh, quick question, um, Lisa. Uh, do you know when this proclamation, uh, the Pride Proclamation, will be um, read by the council? Do you know which date? I do not, but I okay. will definitely find out and get that information over to you. Wonderful. And also, if you could uh, give that information, you know, out in an email, Lisa, to the entire commission. Um, yes, I, I know the first Friday, uh, first Friday, Pride is going to have a very strong presence at uh, Heritage Square. So uh, it would be great if we could have Mayor Daggett read it there. <laughs> you know? I think that's what uh, Deb Taylor is going to try and do. So. We'll definitely let you guys know. I'll look into it and let you know for sure. Okay, thank you, Carolyn. Um, can you, it, it, are you able to put that uh, uh, work group? I know I was real late sending it to you. Yes, just a second, there we go. You should be able to see my screen. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Uh, so, it, you know, just want everybody to uh, look at this again. I think, oh, I, I sent you an error. Bethany Camp actually is not on the proclamations, uh, is what she Oops, told me. Sorry. So, <laughs> oh, <yes. no. laughs> so I guess that that needs to be removed. I made a mistake there. Okay. And then uh, the library co uh, collaboration is... Um, is me, Bethany, and Alika, and uh, our community member, Ray Garcia. And um, the History and Stories Project is uh, Bethany, and Alika, Carolyn, Sarah, and Ray, and myself. Is that correct? Okay, and then on the renaming the peaks, it's myself and Deanne Wegwert, ex officio, and I reported last week, last month, what the uh, uh, current process, uh, current status was of that, which is it's been sent to the state. Uh, all of our letters of request of support and are are there. Okay, new holiday designation: Jean, uh, Bethany, and Kim. And I've already given a report on that. Downtown Business Alliance, we decided to make that inactive uh, last time. Uh, Carolyn tried and tried and tried and tried and just could not get a response. So that one is now inactive. Uh, equitable Restroom uh, Fair work group, that was Jean D and Chris. And uh, it's in the queue for city council to act on now, so no report. Anti-camping, uh, Marcella and myself, uh, the review of the data will probably commence in the fall for a handoff to the housing committee. Um, so that hasn't changed. The calendar group, uh, Sarah, Bethany, and Lisa. Is there a report on that group? We are still needing to connect to meet up, but just to let you know, Sarah, I have been looking into some designs for the actual calendar, and I will forward that information over to you and Bethany, and hopefully we'll be able to schedule um, a meet to collaborate uh, soon. Okay, Sarah says that sounds good. Women's History Month, Jean, Bethany, uh, Kara, and Lisa. I am not uh, uh, aware of anything that I know we haven't met this this month. Um, do you have anything to report, Lisa? I think that one we need Just to do after, some follow -up. After we read the proclamation, um, there was nothing else that we were moving forward on with that. Uh, what we're going to try and do is tie that into the calendar pro project that we're working on. So as soon as we're able to meet, um, I think the thing was Bethany was waiting to see if we could tie it on to our city website. I did find out that we could. And from there, we're just going to meet and move forward on the design and implementation of it. OK, and uh, if my memory serves me correctly, um, 
Uh, Carolyn, weren't you, uh, didn't you have some comments last month about the possibility of a uh, woman's commission being formed? Yeah. I believe you were in support of that. Should we just switch? Uh, should we add a new work group or should we switch Women's History Month or expand Women's expand. History Month yeah. to uh, um, include um a recommendation. I know I sent that historical material out. I hope everybody got. Yeah. Did you all get that? I know Lisa sent it. OK, so um, and uh, Carolyn, would you like to be added to that group, that work group? Yes, please. OK, would anybody else like to be added to that work group? OK, all righty. We are. Good to go. And before you go forward, um, Lisa, did you send us the um, the historical part on the Women Commission? I did. I did. Okay. I sent that out several weeks ago, so you should have. Okay, that in email. I'll check it out. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're good to go there. Um, so we will move on to number D, which is collaboration with library panel history update. I already gave that report, so we will uh, move on to discussion of formal efforts for the Women's Rights Commission. We just did that uh, and uh, move forward uh, to women's calendar report. We just had that and then future uh, uh, future priorities. I am so glad that Ishmael is with us because we had a discussion last week, last month, um, having to do to your, your comments to uh, the commission a couple of months ago. And um, what, we, what we believe is that part of our mission is one of education. And so we were thinking in terms of landlord education, but we really wanted to uh, have you come back and talk to us about um, what you're seeing uh, as kind of the best, um, the best, I guess, direction that we can take as a commission. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, and I appreciate it. I, I'm sorry I was not able to attend. Um, my schedule does not work well with your schedule. And <laughs> right, right now we're on summer break. I have another <laughs> meeting, a training meeting, so it's good you've given me this opportunity. Once I'm done, I'll go to another training. We are transitioning to a new learning management system. In two weeks, I'll be teaching using that system. But thanks, I Campus. appreciate it. Really. Good old Candice. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I did also talk to the vice provost for international about the issue and she informed me that the problem is much deeper than I actually thought. She told me even a Taiwanese scholar who is a PhD holder, he's a professor in a university in Taiwan, could not get housing here in Flagstaff. Uh -huh. So I thought it was a problem endemic with African students, but when she mentioned this to me, I was shocked. She told me it was so difficult to get him housing that, but he didn't disclose what happened because we just met in a ceremony, African students, I believe, all. But it seemed it's something and um, endemic, entrenched, and there is some ongoing discrimination against foreigners in, by landlords. Now what that, but the provost, the vice provost told me they have um, a member of staff in the international office who is specialized in these things and I have yet to make an arrangement to meet. You know, we just ended the semester last week, so there was a lot going on mm -hmm. and I didn't have a chance. And I think landlord education would be one of them, but we also have Valeria Chase, she's the liaison and I had talked to her about it. She's the liaison between NAU and the city of Flagstaff. In fact, her pay is jointly uh, uh, financed by both NAU and the city of Flagstaff. And her work is to deal with liaison issues to do with NAU and especially students and the city of Flagstaff. So I think that would be the best starting point is to maybe have her join and tell us what strategy we can use 
because she's a liaison. She's supposed to work with both NAU and the city of Flagstaff in terms of addressing issues, which maybe the city residents may complain about, what NAU may complain about, and handle these in conjunction with also the international office, because those who experience this discrimination tend to be international students, international scholars. So my suggestion would be education is a good, but we need a contact person who does this on a day to day basis. And Valeria Chase, who is the manager of city NAU affairs, could be the first point of contact if we are going to do any education. And then from them, or maybe appoint somebody from the city who will oversee this landlord education, because I, I don't think necessarily landlords would because it's money i don't think they would turn away money but it depends where it's a shared accommodation maybe for undergraduate students you may have some students saying i don't want to share with this and that brings me to a meeting we had with black students here on campus where it took it came out clearly that some students when they come to NAU, this is the first time they are seeing a black student. This is the first time they are seeing an Asian student because they've come from very rural uh, areas where they don't have multicultural uh, experience. They don't have students of another racial group. They may have one or two, but generally they, but when they come to the university, then they encounter all these groups. And I'm want to tell you the n-word has been written in some of the re residential halls here at NAU and some of these students confess that they thought that's a common terminology they used it where they were they didn't see anything wrong with it but only to come here at NAU and it becomes problematic so even NAU we have a lot to do to educate our undergrad okay but the landlord too have to be our partners in terms of combating this anti-black, anti-Asian, anti-immigrant racism. And some of these students and scholars are here for a short period of time. You don't want them welcomed with such a uh, an experience that they are not wanted, you know. And yet they've just come to study and go back or go away. So I think landlord education, having a contact person both within the city and NAU would be a good starting point. And finally, before I complete, I would like to inform this committee. I've been elected the faculty chair of the Commission for Ethnic Diversity at NAU. So there will be a lot of meetings I'll be doing as ethnic commission diversity. And we need to build solidarity with CODA because some of the things I've, we have been talking about, we do them here at NAU, but we don't invite CODA or representation from CODA or the city of Flagstaff. And some of the things you're proposing to do or you've done, we don't also get to know them. So we are operating on different wavelengths sometimes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, and thank you, Carolyn, for you know getting your uh, getting the whole ball rolling with this. Um, okay, so my takeaways were um, we will contact her and invite the liaison to uh, to one of our meetings to present, and maybe out of that can come a work group so that uh, we can formally meet with her you know, to have a uh, follow-up um, in strategizing. And the landlord education really should have some involvement uh, with legal and staff, um, with with legal staff and other staff of city. In other words, make it, um, uh, you know, something that has some oversight. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, really congratulations on your appointment. Uh, and uh, I really welcome, and I know the whole, commission does we all need to be working together you know it is in fact like carolyn said we are one team okay. so i really want to open it up now to other uh comments from the commission i would like to go first to congratulate you ishmael on your appointment 
And and yes, you are so correct. We we have so many great ideas in 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 Flagstaff, in but we we're not together. We're not cohesive. You know, we're not collaborating. And and I think um, once we get together and start sharing um, different experiences and also different um, professions, you know, um, definitely we'll be able to move forward faster. And and getting the legal persons too involved, you know, and, and this is this the housing thing. I mean, I have been discriminated against when I moved here four years ago. Um, so I think it's a the more education and awareness. And that's what why code is here to do that too. So um yeah, definitely we need to do something. Housing is hard to get anyway, right? In Flagstaff, it's hard. And then an extra barrier now is when we have that um, that marginalization. So yes, thanks so much for bringing this forward and we'll definitely be a big part of this. Thank you. And you know, I just really think in terms of our education, um, if we can, um, well, and this is probably a work group uh, comment, but um, Diversity enhances our experience of life so greatly, you know, and if we can kind of change the narrative there uh, from fear and marginalization to uh, welcome, welcoming and uh, enhancement. But uh, anyway, that was just something that occurred to me. Other commissioners? There were right in the chat it's... that we can speak to Angela. Castaneo, I believe at NAU, she leads a faculty course on um, community practice. Sarah, go ahead. Hi, it's Sarah Jarvis. I, I work at NAU. I'm in the biology department and I just finished a year long um, community of practice that focused on um, anti-racism and um, it, she might be worth talking to. I, I think, you know, the university is so large that sometimes we don't know what other parts of the university is doing. Uh, she might be a really good resource for you. And um, we, the, our course focused on Cephans and Kiosk, so engineering and um, those of us in biology and in chemistry. And they are starting a whole nother cohort um, this next academic year. But she might be a good resource for you um, to, you know, talk to about exactly these issues that that you're seeing. And I completely 100% agree with you that this is um, completely, um, we should not tolerate this behavior at all. So uh, I think, you know, getting involved with the city, but also other other allies at the university would be um, really good for you as well. Yeah, thank you. Just also to add, I talked to the VP when we were meeting the black students and because um, they also, I don't know whether you're aware, you may not be aware, they had a, a protest march and they went to the president's office. Equally, the black faculty and staff, we, we had a dinner and also a breakfast with the president. The dinner was last week. But when the student had a meeting, I was invited and the VP student affairs said that that's something they are going to do is to start during the orientation week is to educate students that they are coming to a multicultural and community and that all that they practiced in their high school, which were monocultural in most instances, will have to be cast aside and that they will have to think in a new way that they may have seen these people on TV because it's all started as a cartoon show. Somebody was in the health services center watching a racist cartoon and then black students came to the gym and they were horrified. So one of the things the university has done is they are going to do a subscription with dedicated channels so there's no way you can move and start watching. Because when they talk to the providers, the providers said, we have some of those racist uh, programs for historical purposes. If there's somebody who may want to research, okay? So the best thing is to do a dedicated. So 
And all these things came up, even housing at NAU is also challenging for black students in terms of the N word is written across. They wouldn't even share, white students don't want to share with the black students. So it's something endemic even within the institution. And that is one thing that the VP Student Affairs said, they're going to try and get a handle of it by through the orientation week in the orientation week. But we have to do something within the larger community because it's not an easy fix. And I agree with you, but landlords need to be educated because the landlord will calculate. I have an apartment with three bedrooms. I need one person. If this is a black student like that black student who was coming in, the two threatened to move out. So he succumbed. He said, OK, I'm not going to rent you, you know. Yeah. So it, it's something comes back to the bottom line. But okay. we NAU has to do something. The city of Flagstaff has to do its part. And that's the only way we can move. But thank you very much, everybody. Yeah. I have to go to this Canvas training. I know, Javis, you know Canvas. I'm teaching a class in a new system. So I'm mm -hmm. going to leave you. And thank you, everybody, for okay. listening to me. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, so Ishmael. And by the way, you're going to love Thanks, Cam Ishmael. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you. You are. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK, Carolyn just said maybe we should host a public seminar and invite landlords and housing and marginalization. That is a great idea. Good that, idea. Yeah, that, that is a great idea. OK, I really look forward to this new work group and I look forward to uh, talking to, let's see, um, the uh, um, uh, the liaison with the city and invite her to uh, uh, join one of our meetings, maybe even next month. So um, I'm, I'm wondering, do we need to start a work, uh, have people volunteer for a work group now, or do we need to go ahead? We've got a lot on our place right now and wait till next month after Pride is over. And and that was for the housing part of yeah. it. Well, for the landlord, yeah, for the, the landlord, landlord thing, education, yeah, yeah. Um, I think we should. Can we wait until um yes. our council liaison is on here? Yes. Uh, yeah, Thanks. yeah. That's I agree with you. That's 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 the best call. All right. Well, I'm really excited that we're going to move forward with that. Um, so we'll move on to number H, uh, which is recommendation on anti-camping. We already covered that. And now we're going to go to uh, current priorities. The rainbow uh, com uh, convocation already happened. Uh, and then the other thing on that part of the list is, uh, or the agenda is fire information survey. And that's just a reminder actually, uh, for everybody to go, um, uh, our presenter Carrie last, last, uh, uh, last month, um, gave us a link to a survey, uh, on our knowledge base on, um, fire information. So uh, I just really encourage everybody to go ahead and fill that out. OK, now we're at uh, really. Hold on a second. Um, Lisa, can you take over for just a minute? I've got to go to my door. Yes, yes. OK, I'll be right back. Okay. So um, we are scrolling down to, I believe it's the last thing on our list, which is just our agenda for future meetings. And we're going to keep on our agenda list, um, the Municipal Equity Index report. Um, hopefully we will be able to get another update on that. We had a really good presentation a couple of months back, and I know that they were still doing some work on, on the equity index. So hopefully we'll be able to reach out um to the people that was working on this and invite them back to give us more updates on um the index and then the next thing that we're going to keep for a future agenda meetings is the discussion on the commemorative flag and again rose tohi is working on this with coda um she's doing an extended an, an extension amount of work on 
flag design and what that represents. And, you know, um, if one flag can embody multiple um, uh, cultures or if they're going to be presenting one flag for each group, meaning indigenous group, African Americans, et cetera, et cetera. So she's doing a lot of research on that. I know the last time we talked to her, it was still in progress. So hopefully we'll have an update on that um, soon. And then of course, um, the goal is to help this in the future with representing the American, um, the African American community for Black History Month that we have a cultural flag. And Miss Jean, I was just going over item number 10 and just wrapping up what we have on the future agenda. So you can take over from there. Well, just go ahead and, and finish your thoughts. I, I just came in and uh, heard that you were, I believe you were talking with uh, Rose uh, about the um, flag. Is that where we left off? Yes, basically just we're waiting for, is she still doing research? Absolutely. And we're waiting for an update from her on where she's going or what she's found with that research. Okay. And, and I think that's really it. Um, it's very unusual for us to finish ahead of time, but here we are. We're 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 finished ahead of time. Um, any any comments from any of uh, our commissioners or our guests? Jean, this is Dee. Can I say one thing? Please do, Dee. <laughs> well, I. Um... I don't know if if anyone on the commission uh, attended the uh, Rainbow Convocation at NAU, but there were about 120 participants, and it was amazing. And um, all of these young people celebrating who they really are, and it was lovely. And I just wanted to say that it was a huge success. Music to my ears. You know, we don't hear that enough because what's all filling the airways is all this reactionary backlash, you know, against uh, uh, our community. And I'm, I'm really thank you for sharing that. We need to hear more about, um, you know, visibility and what's working and that, you know, these efforts. They that, may that have once in a while we have a success. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you for letting me mention that. Anybody else? Anybody else have any comments? I just well, think it was a really good opportunity for <clears throat> Ishmael to come and speak to us today about yeah. the issues that um, he's seeing at NAU, because that floats out to the community, just like Carolyn said. You know, she's been here four years and she's had some experience. Mm -hmm. I have not had direct experience uh, at, at me directly, but I was uh, a privy to a situation that happened in front of me. And that's just as challenging because then you kind of feel like you have to step in and speak on the behalf of the person that it's happening to. So yes. knowing that we have uh, students that are on campus that are struggling in several eras, areas, and housing being uh, one of them. And as we often have said, housing in Flagstaff is really, really difficult in general. I know myself finding housing when I moved up here, it was a challenge. But to add that other layer on top of it, it's just a very difficult thing. And it, it can be very disparaging um, to the person who wants to come in this community and do good work. So I'm just glad that he was able to clarify and point us in the direction of who to go speak with regarding some of these issues. Go ahead, Carolyn. Yeah, I just wanted to say that was, um, I, I echo what you're saying there too. Um, when you hear one or two incidents uh, happening, just multiply it by 20 because there are a lot of people who will not come forward and speak on certain things. So, so I don't take it lightly when I hear at least one person say something and I start looking, hmm, I wonder how many other persons are having that same problem. Um, so I'm so happy that we're here in a position that we can help in any way. 
And um, I am definitely waiting for us to, to have that work group um, next month or the following month because um, marginalization, it starts with one thing and then it breeds into other things. So it's not one day it's going to be one sector and next minute is going to be another community and then it's going to be another community. Um, marginalization is a personality flaw and there's no respect to a person's. It could be anybody's time and day. So we want to stamp that out because I don't think Flagstaff wants to be a part of that, right? Right. Yeah. Yes, well said. Well, I'm looking forward to that. That uh, I, I I agree. I'm so glad that uh, Carolyn, you you brought Ishmael to us, and uh, we can really get some effective collaboration with NAU going and start start using our voices. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Well, we can go ahead and adjourn early. I just want to. Uh, uh, remind everybody that uh, we have the parade coming up and I hope everybody comes to the parade and uh, we will um, be in touch with any, uh, I will um, have Lisa send you updates with specifics. Just a second, we have uh, Karen House joining us. Oh, Karen, okay. Hello, welcome. Karen, you're on mute if you're speaking. <laughs> I was not, but thanks for the welcome. Sorry to be a little late. No worries. No, you're fine. We were, we were actually getting ready to wrap up. We were finishing early, but was there anything that you needed to answer, or excuse me, um, talk about regarding this past city council's meeting? Uh, not this past meeting, but I will just uh, let you all know uh, after the proclamation this month for AA uh, and HPI month, there was, we got an email from a community member asking why we didn't recognize Jewish American heritage. <laughs> and um, I, I don't want the commission to feel um, pressure to have to recognize and celebrate everything. I think most of the ones that come from CODA have been things that you've either historically done or um, are, you know, thinking that you you want to present. And I think that's perfectly OK. Um, I just wanted to let you all know that uh, I believe council will be presenting a proclamation for that next week. And um, that's the only reason that you weren't involved in it is because it came from a citizen, not uh, through this commission or a, a request from council. OK, that's good to know. Um, is there any role you would uh, like CODA uh, to take? Councilwoman House or just let it be or? I think just let it be. Um, and then I, I think just for the future, maybe, it, and if you'd like me to reach out to um, Sean as the chief of staff or anybody else with the, the team or the mayor, um, to just ask, you know, is the expectation for CODA to bring all of the, the potential things to council or should, uh, should you just be able to go ahead in the way that you have? Um, I think even looking at the the council's list of uh, commemorations and holidays, Jewish Heritage Month wasn't on there, and it's not because it, it wasn't considered important. It's just not the theme that that kind of uh, rose to the top of that list. But I think there should be room for you all to bring forth any sort of proclamation recommendations that you have based on. Uh, diversity awareness um, and not feel restricted to, you know, the ones that have historically been done. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's really up to you how you want to engage in that because, I mean, there's really, there's at least five 
this month <laughs> that are being celebrated. It's impossible to try and do them all. I think just, you know, where you see community attention uh, coming and, and feel that pull to bring awareness to that is helpful to just keep it in the mind of council as well. Very much appreciate that. Um, I, I think that um, one of the things that's going on right now in a number of, um, you know, kind of groups, um, but um, there is so much anti-Semitism right now. And I think these proclamations really do matter uh, mm -hmm. because they highlight and they, they bring attention. So uh, we'll put that on the agenda for next, uh, for next month to talk about that. But with the white supremacy going on uh, in such kind of accelerated and in increased visibility um, and um, actions, um, well, it's not visibility, it's A15, you know, AR15s. Um, we, we really need to, um, I think it really matters to highlight and especially uh, groups that are being presently persecuted, you know, um, I find it very scary. So thank you for bringing that uh, to our attention um, and we'll put it on the agenda for next for next month. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, uh, Jean, what that just triggered for me, and then I promise I will not hold you guys up. I know you were about to log off. Um, so I apologize that I'm coming in right at the end of that. But um, I know that one of the scope of work projects for you all uh, this year, I, I believe, wasn't one of the things that you wanted to do a, a recommendation to council um, for the inclusion of Juneteenth as a city holiday? Yes. Okay. Um, if you want to follow up with me on any progress that's been made on that, or if you would like that introduced as a fair from the council side, uh, I am happy to do that. I think uh, it may be, you know, it's probably too late for this year in terms of getting that to happen because it's coming up here. But um, to introduce that at some point as like something that's actually showing up on a council agenda, I am happy to help with. Yeah, um, that would be great. I'll tell you what the update just very briefly is we've got a work group and we're actually collaborating with the IC and um, we we've had one meeting um, with the IC and um, everybody kind of took a task home. They um, uh, we, we kind of tabled for right now the day after Thanksgiving as uh, an in indigenous uh, day. Uh, celebration because you know that kind of it, it wasn't well received uh, but we're going forward with the recommendation for the Juneteenth thing and we've got our next meeting and I'll make sure that you get uh, a zoom invite for it Kara um, our, our next meeting of that work group where I think we'll finally come up with you know the draft of verbiage to send to you um, is on the uh, I, I believe it's the 16th. It's a Friday, uh, the 16th of June. So, um, yeah, uh, we couldn't move fast enough to get our draft recommendation to, uh, you know, with the IC, the collaboration to council. Um, so, um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm not sure how how quickly council can move. I don't. If you could introduce it before we get to it. Um, we can speak in support um, because Juneteenth is coming up. <laughs> right. So, That's my only thought with the with the fair process. It takes months uh, okay. before it goes forward. So and I think anything that's introduced, like even a, a, a request from a commission or a citizen's petition tends to take months. So I, I do think it's probably late for this year but at least to introduce it as an idea for council to consider for next year. Yes, yes. I, I Yeah, I think I can, um, what I can actually plan to do is I could either introduce it at the uh, meeting the 13th um, mm -hmm. of June or wait until after your meeting and present it at the council meeting on the 20th. Uh, I, I would, 
whichever you think is best, because uh, you know the council. Um, either way, uh, if it gets going, we can add a written recommendation at a later date, because like you say, it takes so long for it to then come up. Um, mm -hmm. So um, whichever you think is is best, you know, I, I, I defer to you in that. Um, and if you let Lisa know, she can send out um, an email to, you know, the whole commission. And if any of us are able to show up to do, um, you know, like, a, uh, you know, the, the public participation or something like that, uh, we could do that. But whatever you think is best, Kara, but we will definitely be, you know, drafting a, 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 for, a formal recommendation as a collaboration, um, you know, between IC and CODA. So, but that won't come up before the 13th, that's for sure. That's right. one of the things we talked about at that work group is just the, the, the timeline, of, we, we just didn't have enough time to get it in for this year. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think what I'll do is, the first thing is I'm, I'm going to ask if uh, there's a proclamation planned for Juneteenth with Council. Okay. And um, if it can be put on the agenda for the 13th or 20th, because the 20th is the day after, um, but the first day back to work for most folks, uh, after the, the federal holiday. Yeah. Um, so I think either works and maybe it's better to focus on the 20th for that um, to allow your team to have met, um, uh, suggest that we have a proclamation and I can rope you in if the city says, yes, let's do it um, to get that prepared for them. And uh, I'll do that. I'll reach out and ask if we can do a proclamation for Juneteenth um, and see what day that would fall on and then use that same day during uh, to from from council to introduce a fair item on celebrating Juneteenth as a city holiday. And then um, when it comes back as, you know, seeking council support for it moving forward, I can bring that uh, to CODA's attention in case any members want to come and, and speak in support of it um, uh, during public participation. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Any commissioners have any questions uh, for Kara? No, I don't have any question, but I'm so happy that um, Kara did start this conversation um, because yes, I'm, I'm on to the proclamation part of it too. So once you um once council says yes you know just let us know we can go ahead and write the proclamation and be part of it um but another thing too is um cora on a larger scale and this may be another conversation how can we get it over to the county so is it that the city um go ahead and say yes this is um, a holiday and then we approach the county another way I'm just asking for my own knowledge. <laughs> yeah, I think from the county perspective, and this is me speaking not in my capacity as a city council member, right, right, because I right. have to be distinct in it. Right, of course. <laughs> but I believe through ADAC, uh, there okay. has been a request for the county to do a, a proclamation or recognition. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah. And Good. that may be what I share with council and with uh, CODA after asking, can we get this on the agenda and just share, here's a draft that's been uh, proposed from the Commission on, or the uh, African Diaspora Advisory Council for the county um, that we can use as kind of a template for a city proclamation. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. All right. Well, and I just, uh, uh, Carolyn has a comment in the chat that says, should we try to have a diversity month to celebrate all other communities and groups uh, that may be, uh, need to be included? Uh, I will make sure that that is on the agenda that uh, for next month so that we can have a discussion about it. And uh, I know the county's done uh, diversity months, which have been great. 
um, usually outside in the warm in, in the warmer months. And so um, I think it's uh, uh, very timely that we uh, that we set our sights on that too. So, okay, Andy, we've got about five minutes before uh, closing. Any other comments or any questions? I don't see anything in the chat. Okay. Um, Jenna, do you have anything you'd like to bring to the commission? I do not. Thank you for asking. I'm just here to oh. listen. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, and uh, we will reconvene uh, next month. And in the meantime, uh, see you all at the parade. And uh, I will adjourn this meeting at 2.56 um, on May 17th. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.